Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 version 23H2, also known as the Windows 11 2023 update. This update includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last major release of Windows 11, which was version 22H2, released uh, pretty much a year ago. So this is the annual fall feature update for Windows 11. This year's is quite interesting because it's technically not got much in it although it kind of also has because it's acting as a cumulative update for, for all of the sort of new features Microsoft announced over the summer some of those features have already rolled out some of them haven't um most users don't have them yet so if you are upgrading to 23H2 much of what you're going to see here is likely going to be new to you but we'll start with how to get the Windows 11 23H2 updates well it's quite simple all you need to do is head to the Windows settings app go down to Windows Updates and ensure that this option here is switched on. This is the get the latest updates as soon as they're available toggle. With that clicks on, select check for updates and you should see Windows 11 version 23H2 appear in your downloads list. Once you've installed it, you will be on the desktop and this is what you can expect to see. So let's start with the taskbar. Specifically, let's start with Teams Chat. Starting with this release, Teams Chat is no longer an integrated part of the operating system. It's now a standalone app, which means you can uninstall it if it's not something you use. Uh, the app itself has a slightly tweaked interface. It's still quite similar to what it was before. We still have this centered sort of chat pane, and you can click in here to start typing with friends if you want. But as I mentioned, this is now a standalone Teams app. So if you don't like Teams, if you don't use it, you can close out of this, you can go into your all apps, and you can quite literally uninstall Teams like so, and the app will be removed from your system, uh, just like so. Uh, this also means if you go into like taskbar settings, the option to enable or disable Teams chat is no longer present. It's quite literally an app now. So you can pin it and unpin it from the taskbar like a normal app uh, and you can uninstall it like I just showed you. So that's one of the new changes with the Windows 11 23H2 release. In addition, the apps list here now will also show you when an app is either a system component or not. So if it's not a system component, it won't say anything. But if it is a system component, as you can see here, it will display the system tag beneath it. And that simply means it's part of the OS and you cannot remove it. So if I right click on any of these, you'll see that there's no option to uninstall them. Uh, and if we jump into the settings app here, uh, you can see that there is a new dedicated system components area. If we go down to apps, go to installed apps, you can see system components at the bottom here, which will list you all of those built in apps that comes preloaded with Windows. Right now it includes Windows Security, Tips, Phone Link, Microsoft Store, Git Help, and Game Bar. So those two changes are what's exclusive to 23H2. The rest of this video is going to showcase all of the features Microsoft announced over the summer, some of which have already started rolling out, some of which haven't. Many of you watching this likely don't have most of these new features yet. So if you update to 23H2, you will get them out of box. Uh, and so we're going to start with Windows Copilot. So we're not going to spend too much time on Copilot. We have an entire separate video dedicated to it if you'd like to learn more. Uh, this video will just give you a, essentially a brief overview of what this is. It's essentially a replacement for Cortana that's much smarter. So it's built on technology called ChatGPT. If you don't know what ChatGPT is, uh, let's ask Copilot. What is ChatGPT? Question mark. So what this is going to do is use essentially a big brain, <laughs> artificial intelligence to uh, find out what ChatGPT is. It's gonna reach out to the web, find that information for you, and then provide it to you as if it was a human. So ChatGPT is an AI powered language model developed by OpenAI. It has been trained on a massive amount of text data from the internet and can generate human-like uh, human -like text responses to a given prompt. So yes, it's a very complex AI essentially. You can ask it super complex questions and most of the time it will be able to give you an answer. You can see it gives you links to uh, different sources if you'd like to learn more. Uh, and then you've also got some um, automated responses here if you'd like to dive deeper into the topic you've asked about. There's also some basic integration with Windows itself. So in addition to be able to answer sort of questions, internet-based questions, uh, you can use it to configure some Windows settings. So if we hit on the refresh button here and start a new conversation, I can ask it to turn on dark mode and using its intelligence it can reach into the windows settings app and enable that option for me you can also ask it to do things like turn on do not disturb and uh, once again we'll get a little prompt here that says hey would you like to turn on do not disturb after it's figured out what it is you are asking it 
right like so hit yes and now as you can see do not disturb has been enabled there's also some basic integration with microsoft edge so if you load up microsoft edge here and go to uh, an article for example we can ask the copilot to summarize the content that's going on in our browser so using microsoft edge i can say hey summarize this post what it's going to do is search your active microsoft edge tab read the content for you and then give you essentially a TLDR, uh, which is great for people like me who are lazy and just don't want to read anything. So you can see this is a relatively long article and uh, Copilot is going to do its best to summarize it for me. So instead of reading the whole thing, I can just read what Copilot thinks is the most important information. Uh, so that's just a few examples of how Copilot can be useful. Uh, as I mentioned, its implementation is quite basic right now. Over time, this is expected to get a lot more advanced uh, with things like third-party plugins, uh, sort of enhancing the experience. With third-party plugins, Copilot will be able to sort of integrate itself more deeply with things like File Explorer or Start Menu or third-party apps like Spotify or Adobe Photoshop, you name it. Real quick before we move on from this, uh, the Copilot also supports images, so we can drag an image into it if you want. Uh, and you can ask it to tell me what this image says. And Copilot is smart enough to look at the image and uh, see the content within it and hopefully tell you what it says. So you can see it quite obviously says a connected accessory is not authorized. Let's see if Copilot can actually figure that out. The image shows an error message uh, from Xbox that says a connected accessory is not authorized. Brilliant. It was able to figure that out. And in fact, it's even going to go ahead uh, and tell me what exactly it is. It says an error message from Xbox, which is frankly amazing. So there you go. That's a very quick look at the Copilot. As I said, we have a dedicated video that you can go and check out if you'd like to learn more about what Copilot is all about. Now, moving right along, let's launch the uh, quick settings panel real quick. Microsoft has updated the sound output menu here to make it more useful, essentially. Uh, in the past, you could only really change your output device here, but now you can turn on, or on and off spatial sound, and you can even adjust individual volume levels for specific apps. So if you have uh, Edge or Spotify open, and you want your system volume around 70%, but Spotify down at about 30%, or maybe Edge at 50%, you can do that through here. So I can turn Edge down if I want to while leaving you know, the overall system volume up at max if that's what I want to do, which is pretty cool. Okay, moving on to the File Explorer. Microsoft has sort of given the File Explorer a facelift, at least in regards to the home page. You can see here the home page is now using sort of modern highlight and tick boxes and whatnot. And that's because they've rebuilt it from the ground up using the same modern code that you can find all over Windows 11. There's also an updated details pane here, which normally isn't on by default. You can enable it just by clicking details like so. Uh, but when it is on, if you select a file, you'll get a thumbnail of the file here, as well as uh, a brief overview of its details, as well as recent activity. So this hooks into Microsoft 365 if you use Windows for work or uh, in school and you have shared files with classmates or colleagues, you'll be able to see exactly what people are doing in those files and see their recent activity straight through the file explorer, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the interface along the top has been updated as well. It looks more like a web browser now. So we have our sort of navigation controls here for going backwards and forwards, refreshing and going up. Then we have our address bar here, which has been modernized using, you know, the same Windows 11 design language we've seen all over the place. And then we have a search bar here as well. And then all of our sort of file commands have been moved below the address bar. So we now have things like uh, cut, copy, paste, etc., etc., uh, below the address bar instead of next to it like it was on uh, the previous version of Windows 11. Also new to the File Explorer is this new gallery feature. Now what this essentially allows you to do is collect all of the photos across your system in one place. So you can manage the collection here and you can add different directories. This will pull from the pictures folder in OneDrive as well as the pictures folder locally on your device. And as I said, you can add even more directories. So if you wanted it to pull from the desktop or your documents folder or the entire drive, you could do that. You can add it through here and uh, the file explorer will pull in all of those photos if you have thousands of photos you have a timeline here that you can scroll through and uh, it makes organizing and seeing them all in one place a little bit easier of course this means you can now sort of click on files here and with the details pane open you can see uh, a bigger sort of preview of it as well as details and if you double click on one of these uh, that will pull you into the photos up where you can view it in full screen or edit it or do whatever it is you want to do with it. All right, moving right along. Uh, the File Explorer and Windows itself has been updated to support 
uh, more compressed archive format. So in the past, it really only supported zip files. That was the most common one at least. But now it supports a lot more common ones. In addition to zip files, it supports RAR files, 7-zips, and TAR files. You can see here we have one of each there, 7-zip, TAR, and RAR, and you can see Windows has recognized it. And so I can right-click on this if I want to and uh, extract that file using the built-in extraction feature that's native to Windows. No longer do I need to go and download 7-zip to handle a 7-zip file or WinRAR to handle a WinRAR file. I can just do it all through here. So if we right click on the RAR file, for example, and extract it, uh, there you are. The RAR file has been extracted. Windows now recognizes these file formats by default, which is absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's move on to some of the improvements to the Inbox apps. We'll start with the Paint app, which uh, has received quite a significant update with this release. It now supports transparent images, so, such as PNGs, which is fantastic, but it also now has layers. I kid you not. Uh, so now, it's just like Photoshop, essentially, you can have multiple layers of things. And not only that, as I mentioned, uh, since it supports transparent backgrounds, Microsoft has also added um, the ability to sort of automatically identify and remove backgrounds. So if we open up a picture here uh, of me and Mr. Mobile, uh, we can zoom out on this and you can see there's a dedicated remove background button. And if I click on that, the Paint app will use AI, more or less, to or machine learning to identify the background and remove it for me. And as you can see with that checkered background, that means transparency is identified. And with the layers feature, you can add new things here. So if I wanted to make the background a different color now, I could come to the fill tool and make it this sort of dark red or brown. Well, that's backwards. So if we move that up, there you go. We now have... Um, a different background, which is pretty fancy. So in addition to all of those features, Microsoft is also adding a co-creator feature, which uses AI to generate images for you. Now this is in preview and it's not rolling out to everybody yet, but this will be coming to everybody uh, in the near future. Uh, but just like Copilot, you can ask it something uh, to create something and uh, it will hopefully do it for you. So I'm gonna quite literally use the example in the box there. Uh, a cat walking in the woods. And there's an option to choose an art style here, which is quite interesting. So let's do an oil painting. That sounds cute. So it has generated us three images. Let's select this one. Why not? Uh, and it has put it uh, behind me and Mr. Mobile. Let's uh, figure this out here. So let's say no. Sorry, get rid of that picture. Uh, and there's the beautiful image it has generated for us. Now everybody can be a paint artist, not just the professionals, uh, but hey, there you are. So that's a quick look at the new Microsoft Paint app, which is rolling out with 23H2. Okay, on the same vein as apps, let's scroll down to the bottom of the start menu here and open up a new app that's present with 23H2, and that's the Windows Backup app. This is a cloud-based backup solution that's now built into Windows natively. Uh, believe it or not, Windows hasn't had a competent backup solution for many years, uh, but with this, uh, it finally has one. So this uses your Microsoft account and OneDrive, and as you can see here, I can select Backup, and it's going to back up all sorts of information, such as folders, Oh, apparently I need to verify <laughs> my credentials. Okay, but I, the idea is here you can back up, say, your folders such as documents, pictures, videos, as well as apps, settings, and credentials. The apps one is the most interesting because what this does is allow you to restore all of the apps you have on one PC somewhere else powered by the Microsoft Store. So what this essentially does is uploads a manifest to the cloud. Uh, the Microsoft Store identifies that manifest when you set up a new PC. It says, hey, would you like to restore those apps? Uh, and if you say yes, then the Microsoft Store will just automatically go in and download all of the apps you had on your PC, assuming they are in the Microsoft Store. If they're not in the Microsoft Store, uh, Windows would do its best to pin a placeholder to the start menu or taskbar. Uh, and then when you click on it, it will more or less just load up a web browser and take you to wherever the download is for that app. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It streamlines moving to a new PC, uh, which is something Windows has needed desperately uh, for many, many years. Uh, the Notepad app has been updated uh, to remember content. So Notepad automatically saves your progress. All your content will be available the next time you open Notepad. So instead of having to manually save individual text files every time you open and close Notepad, you can type things in here uh, and sort of close it and not have to worry because the next time you open Notepad, that content will still be there. And that, of course, works across uh, many different tabs. Close all of those, come back to it another day and all those tabs will be remembered. So that's pretty neat. 
Okay, so lastly, we're going to take a look at the snipping tool. The snipping tool has been updated with a handful of new features. If we open up the snipping tool here and create a full screen snip, we should be able to jump into the snipping tool uh, and see that there's a couple of additional um, things in here, starting with the ability to um, analyze text in the screenshots, like so. Uh, so you can see here we can now copy text straight from a screenshot if that's something we want to do, which is super handy. But we can also quickly redact content in the screenshot as well. So you can see my email is up here on the left and I've clicked quick redact and it's analyzed any phone numbers or email addresses um, and automatically redacted them, which is pretty amazing. There's also an updated snipping tool interface itself. So you can see up here we have uh, the option to snip, but then you can quickly switch over to screen recording if that's something you want to do, uh, which is pretty nice. Okay, now we're gonna spend the rest of this video taking a look at some of the new settings. Uh, and we'll start with the settings app itself, which now has a dedicated homepage for the most common or recommended settings across your system. So as you can see here, uh, these recommended settings for me right now are installed apps, display and mouse. I believe these change depending on what you dive into the most in the settings app. You've also got an overview of your cloud storage, Bluetooth devices, uh, to a fake uh, setup on your account, personalization. Uh, and if you're not subscribed or if you are subscribed to Microsoft 360, you'll get some information about either joining or your current uh, subscription, which uh, is pretty cool. So if we go down to personalization, there's quite a few new things in here. We'll start with dynamic lighting. With the 23H2 release, uh, Windows now has built in support for configuring RGB lights on certain peripherals. Now this doesn't support every RGB device. Uh, Microsoft, I believe, has a list on its website. Uh, but most of the Razer stuff at the very least is supported. I'm sure there's some Corsair stuff here as well. But what it means is you no longer have to go and download those bloated third-party programs to just change the colors of your keyboard. You can do it through Windows now. So you can see here we have a number of different options for it. We have effects. We have either solid color, breathing, rainbow, wave, wheel, and gradient. Uh, and you can uh, configure different things as you go into there, which uh, is pretty cool. Now, if we jump back out of here and go down to the taskbar, Microsoft has added back two sort of classic taskbar features that were available on Windows 10 and prior, but removed with the initial launch of Windows 11. They're back now, and that is the ability to show taskbar app labels. So if we come down here and select never, now on the taskbar, you'll see titles for the apps that you have open, and uh, that works as you would expect which uh, is pretty nice. So this is just like the old days of Windows XP and Windows Vista, where the app on the taskbar was a much larger button because it included not only the icon, but the title of the app as well. Uh, that was a feature that you could enable in Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Uh, um, but then with Windows 11, they got rid of it. But now it's back, which uh, is always fun to see. So there are some other quality of life improvements with this update. If we go into task view here and switch to a new um, desktop, when you switch back using the keyboard command, you'll get a little sort of brief pop up here that says the name of the task view desktop you are currently visiting, uh, which is kind of nice. In the start menu, when you hover over files, you'll get a slightly richer interface here, which has the date as well as where the file is stored, uh, which is pretty cool. So there you are, that is a quick look at the Windows 11 23H2 update. As I mentioned, uh, many of the features uh, showcased in this video may have already rolled out to you. Um, you may not have all of them, you may have some of them, you may have none of them, uh, but updating to the 23H2 release will guarantee access to all of them because it's all in there by default with the 23H2 update. So be sure to check for updates if you'd like to get access to these features now. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.